result machine. They squeeze results out. They have really good performances, top football. And if it's not going that well, they still get results. So that's why you are there. They are full, fully, everybody knows it. They are fully in a fight for winning the league. Um, but again, not really important for tomorrow, uh, for, for Sunday, um, because um, we are there as well. And um, we try to, to be at our best. Of course, a test, uh, but to be facing Liverpool, we're really looking forward. And I know um, these players, my squad, my team, um, uh, will be prepared uh, to, to go, to go and fight and to go with confidence. Uh, but we know that's going to be uh, difficult. Uh, we know we have to suffer, we have to sacrifice to get a good result. Karen Bartley, Julian Laurent in the studio. Karen, Manchester United in the title race, yes or no? Yes. Absolutely. I think, I mean, just look at them, their form, they're absolutely flying. They're, they're full of confidence. I mean, Eric Ten Hag has a well-oiled machine and he's, you know, definitely at the helm. And there's a lot of belief. I mean, Rashford, Rashford is absolutely flying. Mm. Um, you know, the, the changes that have been made in terms of like the substitutions and the timing of it, they're all really, really effective. You know, so I think he's very, Eric Ten Hag is very confident in, in you know, his strategy and his decision making. And I think especially off the win of, you know, the League Cup final, he's mm. got the fans on side, he's got the organization on side, and there's real evidence, you know, that what he's doing works. It's a massive turnaround in such a short space of time, isn't it? Like, I know in the middle they had the, the defeat at the end, they had a hefty one. But remember this last game mm. between uh, Liverpool Manchester United at Old Trafford? That was so pivotal for Ten Hag to get the fans on side. It was a turning point, really, considering he'd lost to... Brentford away and to Brighton at home before that and it was, remember it was a Monday night game and it was like I don't think any manager at United history had lost the first three in the league or something yeah it was a crazy start I remember those horrible and, yeah. and <laughs> for them to go and win that game and um scoring early I think I think helped them massively they had a really good game plan where they, they forced Liverpool to play long mm. which worked really well which shows again I think the uh, the kind of elite mentality that Ten Hag has and even that late goal from Liverpool didn't, didn't change anything and, and that was a very that was exactly the kind of performance that they needed at that time to turn their season around and after that they just built on it collectively the Cristiano Ronaldo issue was dealt very well by Ten Hag mm. and the club to be fair and then players like Casemiro like Rashford slowly becoming the some of the best players in the in the league is there anyone in better form than Marcus Rashford right now? I mean, he, he, the confidence is just oozing out of him, isn't it? 17 goals in 19 games since the World Cup, Karen. I mean, it's, it's been... I mean, if you had to ask the question, which you have, I think Casemiro's up there as well in yeah. terms of the form that he's been on. But, you know, just looking back at some of these clips, I mean, you see Sancho's announced himself as well, you know, and he got back on the score sheet that night. But, yeah, he's, he's been unbelievable, Rashford. Like... The form that he was in maybe at the beginning of the season, the transformation that he's undertaken, he is, you know, maybe this is cliche, but he's become the player that everyone hoped he would be, mm. you know, and I think he's just, I want to know what's going on up there. Yeah. I really, the really want to know. The behind, this is what he's always done, the pace, you use the pace, and I think they're doing that really well this season, but he's added the heading goals, for example, which was not really his forte before, you see there the... The stats, the, the the minute per goal. If you look at his expected goals as well, so he's he's doing much better than the, the goals that you expect him to score, yeah. which is hard to maintain really because the gap is quite big between what you expect him to score and what he actually scored. I don't know if you're a big expected goals fan or no, not. No, no, no. I mean, it, the, others. I can go into all sorts of depth with that, but I think what what is fascinating as well about how he's changed and and his goal threat is the types of movements that he's making. Yeah. To your point, yeah, he's running inside or getting in behind, I should say, but he's also almost, he's become almost more technical than, than I felt like he was, mm. you know, a few seasons ago in terms of understanding, you know, um, getting into tight spaces, the tight control, but then also, what was it, run from the outside, inside? Is that 10 up? I don't know. You know, it, it, it's, so. it must be, right? Because he, he just seems so much more confident to take people on, 1v1, 2v1, whatever it is. Get across people and make sure that, you know, if, if, if he does lose the ball, at least he's fouled. Yeah. You know, he, he seems a lot more intelligent about his approach. Do you know what I really want to ask you about, Marcus Rashford? And I noticed this so many times, particularly this season, and he's, he's done it for years, but he, he very often aims at the goalkeeper's feet deliberately. <laughs> right? You don't see a lot of strikers do that, try and pick out corners top and bottom. And yeah. he has so much success with it. I mean, is that a keeper's nightmare with so much power of the feet? It's, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because I think a lot of times with him as well, there's not very much back lift. 
So as a keeper, you're looking for a trigger. Mm. You know, you're looking at where the ball is in relation to them. Is it close? Is it central? If it's central, they could go right, left, whatever. You know, if it's toe poke, it could be anywhere. Mm. And so it's about that timing as a goalkeeper, like when you hit the set. And for him, yeah, it's it's really difficult because the set position, obviously, you're quite your, your legs are you know a bit wide, mm. and it's really really difficult to go from a narrow start position. So you're seeing keepers go down in the block or maybe try to close the distance as a as a spread. It's a big risk from him though, because it could it go very wrong. Oh yeah. well, yes and no, but yeah. clearly he doesn't think it's going to, and it, it's working for him as well. Yeah. But for me, it's the it's the fact that there's hardly any back lift as well. Doing a lot of work with Benny McCarthy, who is the uh, yeah. the forward coach now at Manchester United, and I think working with Ten Hag and in a structure has helped Marcus a lot. And I think the work with Benny McCarthy in terms of finishing, making those runs, having that kind of confidence mm. has also helped him a lot. And um, what about Liverpool? Because they're actually now only six points off the top four, or off Spurs, I should say, in, yeah. in fourth place. They've got um, a game in hand on them, and they play Tottenham at Anfield to come. So it, it's on for them, isn't it? You know, they, they look resurgent. If you take away the Real Madrid game, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and obviously we're looking at their, their win midweek against Wolves on, on Wednesday night. How crucial, Karen, is it that they finish in the top four in terms of the rebuild and the recruitment for the summer? It, it, it's huge, isn't it? Because, I mean, if, if they don't get that Champions League spot as well and if they don't prove that they're kind of changing things around, they're, they're going to have a real difficult time bringing in their targeted players mm. in the summer right? and, and to rebuild that side. It's clearly an aging squad. It's, it's clearly evolving and it, it needs to evolve a bit quicker. Um, you know, we're seeing, obviously, Nunez is, is creating a lot of opportunities, finishing more, but he's he's a fascinating player. He's he's pacey, he's unpredictable. You don't Strong. necessarily know what you're going to get from him. Mm. Um, he doesn't always make the decisions that you think he's going to make, which as a player as well, as a keeper, you think, yeah. oh, you're probably going to put it there. And he could scuff it and it could go in. You just don't know what you're going to get out of him. Um, the likes of Salah, obviously, he's playing in a different kind of role. So he's not getting the, the touches, the services that we're used to seeing him get. Um, obviously, bringing in Gakpo as well. Yeah. That front three, uh, part of me thinks maybe are they too similar or are they just really, really different? Like, how are you making them work together as yeah. a unit? And Jota's back. And, and yes. of course, Luis Diaz isn't far away as well.